uh, Genesis 37, 18 through 24. And this is a familiar passage of Scripture. However, I pray that your knowledge of this uh, scenario or this circumstance doesn't rob you of a fresh revelation from the Lord. Starting with verse 18, it reads, And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired to slay him. And they said to one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. Our Father, our God, we thank you for the word that is going to come forth on this day, God. God, we ask that you are allowed to come forth with boldness and clarity there in the bottom. We pray, dear only Father, that your word be manifest. Have your way in this place. Allow me to decrease and you increase in me, allowing the people to see none of me but all of you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We give you all the praise. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. And amen. amen. You may take your seats. And so, this is a very familiar passage of Scripture. Joseph is Jacob's favorite son, and he says, his favorite son because he is the son of his old age. You, you learn to appreciate things a little bit more as you get older. Okay. Amen. Amen. So this is the son Amen. of his old age. And so Jacob has, excuse me, Joseph has favor with not only his father, but he also has favor with God. Amen. God has favored him. And we know this because God has given Joseph, the Jacob Joseph, Jacob Joseph, a dream. <laughs> He's given him a dream. Huh? You know God favors you when he places something in you. When he begins to tell you what's going to happen to you. When he begins to give you prophetic dreams about your life. You know God on, favors you. It's, it's one thing to be loved by your father. But when you're loved by our father that is in heaven, whose name is Hallowed. Hallelujah. It is something special. It's something special when God lets you all in on the plans that he has for your life. So we know that God favors him. So because of what God placed in him, he encounters problems. Not outside the house. <laughs> he encounters problems in his own house because of what God placed in him. The Bible says that his brothers could not even speak peaceably to him. Anybody just don't like you for no apparent reason, just can't be nice to you, just don't like you, can't stand your guts, all because of what God has placed in you. You didn't ask for it, but God gave it to you. You just walk in and you just are you. It's like young kids say, I'm just doing me. And people don't like you. Because of the way that God made you. That's right. And so his brothers see him. They see him coming and they say, say first thing they say, here comes the dreamer. See, they start calling you what you are. But see, they try to make it look like there's something wrong with the way God made you. Yeah. Huh? God put the dream in you. And so they begin to call him by what God placed in him. Uh -huh. But 
but they try to turn it around and pervert it like it's a problem. The dream that God has placed in you is not the problem. It's the fact that they can accept the dream. Come on. Huh? Because the dream says that I am going to be over you, brothers. That you're going to bow to me. And him being the youngest, it doesn't even make sense. You see, God will give you a dream that don't even make sense right now. I'm the youngest. I'm doing all the hard work. I'm cleaning up after the sheep right now. Huh? But I have a dream that says, I am going to be first and you are going to be last. But anybody who is in that situation would have a problem with that. Huh? Because you see, the youngest always had the hardest, right? They always got picked on the most. I don't know if you have a younger sibling that, that got picked on. If you were the younger sibling, huh? The younger had to do the hardship, huh? They did the, the, the dirty work, if you will. Huh? They did the dirty work. So the brothers are saying, so you're telling me that you had a dream that you passed over all the hard stuff and you just went to being ruler. Well, what are you saying? You see, people have problems with you because of what God has placed in you. So don't question why. Hallelujah. Don't question why people have a problem with you. They're going to have a problem with you anyway. Huh? It's just what God has placed in you. Huh? But you can't get frustrated about it. You can't get upset about it. You can't call God's dream a curse because they don't like it. Come on. Come on. You can't call it a curse because they don't accept it. It still came from God. So it says that they conspired to put him in a pit. Okay. And so understand that a pit is nothing more than a very large hole. It's a place, watch this, that you can't get out of on your own. Huh? It's a situation in which you have no control. You can't jump out. You can't climb out. Unless somebody helps you out of it, you're not going to make it out. Huh? And so Jacob, Joseph, was placed in a place in which he had no control. But before they put him in, the Bible says they stripped him of his coat. His coat of many colors represented the favor of the Father. You see, people that conspire against you, they seek to take the things that represent your favor. Right. But just because they take the thing, it doesn't mean that they take your favor. People mess up the fact that your blessings are not uh, uh, predicated upon what you have. Huh? The favor is not in the coat. The favor is in the fact that God favors him. So take the coat. Take the car. Take the house. Take whatever you want. I still have God's favor. God's favor. Huh? And we understand that God's favor ain't fair. Huh? God can put me first because he demands it. And you don't have to like it. You don't have to accept it. But it's just what it is. He said they, they conspired to kill him. How many of you know that because of what God has placed in you, people would rather kill you than to deal with you? Huh? That's why they can't speak peaceably to him. If they had the heart to do it and get away with it, they would have done it already. That's right. Huh? That's right. Understand, if people could just get rid of you because of what God has placed on you, they would. How do I know this? Cain killed Abel. That's right. Amen. But he didn't get away with it. Nope. Huh? Uh -huh. If they could kill him and get away with it. But God's favor made one of the brothers said, say no. Don't shed any blood. See, the favor of God on your life demands that you live. The favor of God on your life demands that you see things and live beyond things that other people didn't make it past. That's the favor of God. 
And so all you have to do is keep on living. You see, Satan would have you to kill yourself. Uh -huh. That's right. If I can't get them to do it, then I'll speak to your mind to get you to do it to yourself. Huh? But all you have to do is just keep living. Because we see that the pit is only for a period. The pit is only for a period. The pit has two purposes. The pit is designed to make you whole. Let me say it like this. The hole is designed to make you whole. We put you in a hole to make you whole, to make you perfect, to put you in a place where you can't get out, but guess what? Nobody else wants to get in. I see what you're going through, but I'm not going to step in that. I'll help you out, but I'm not going to get in it with you. God is just trying to, in other words, mature you, to make you whole. And when I say whole, I mean perfect. When I say perfect, I mean that you will be able to withstand whatever the world brings against you. Huh? The whole is a holding pattern for the process. If you take into account uh, a piece of clay that is being turned into pottery, if we first put it on the wheel, the wheel is a type of pit. And you have to stay on the wheel until God makes you what he yeah. wants you to be. Huh? Holding pattern. Then God moves you from the, the wheel to the kiln. The kiln is a type of pit. You have to stay there until God finishes you. Then he takes you out of the kiln and he sets you up on the shelf, holding the pattern to cool. Then he paints you. But then you have to dry. Okay, come on, come on. So each pit that you see is just a holding pattern for where God is taking you. Come on, that's it, right? Understand that God is taking the people that he has favor on somewhere. Yeah. It's not for no reason. It's not happenstance and it's not circumstance. God is trying to do something in your life. Amen. So he puts you in a hole. To make you whole. But he puts you in a hole to make you holy. Not holy as in having holes, but holy as in sanctified. Because he understands that while you're in a hole, the, the, the Bible says that there's no water in the hole. And there's three things we need. We need food, shelter, and water. And the Bible says that there's no water in it. And so unless the Lord brings you out, you won't be able to have what you need. Amen. So the, the fact that there was no water is an indication that they couldn't leave him there. That's right. I'm going to put it like this. If I say I'm not going to kill you, that means that I can't leave you in a place with no provision. Uh, amen. That's right. If I leave you in a hole with no provision, that automatically kills you. But the hole is designed to, to make you holy. It's to separate you from everything else around you. If you look at the fact that when Jesus decided to come out of glory and come to earth, do you not know that he was stepping into a hole? Uh -huh. That's it. Oh. That's it right there. <laughs> he stepped into a hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He stepped into a place that was beneath yes. him. Yeah. Not only was it beneath him physically, but God made his parents a little virgin girl and a carpenter. 
God didn't give Jesus to kings. He could have done that. That's right. He could have given Jesus to priests. They didn't do that. Uh -huh. He gave him to nobodies. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew them. Uh -huh. Nobody could help them but the Lord. Amen. And that's what the whole is all about. Uh -huh. The whole is designed for you to learn how to lean and depend. Come on. Amen. That's right. Mm. So my first point. My first point is don't be pitiful in the pit. Don't, don't turn into a victim while you're down there. Don't talk about nobody loves me. Don't start talking about how nobody didn't care for me. Don't start telling me about how daddy didn't let me, let me play little league and mama didn't take me to cheerleading. It's not a time to become a victim. Don't turn the pit into a pity party. Come on, Yeah. Thank you, God is going to send somebody to get you out of your pit. That means you can't be so holy that you just waiting on God and forget about the people that are around you. God uses men and he's always used the man, man to get his mission accomplished. So stop looking outside of men for God to show up. Sure, he can do it. Sure, he doesn't mind doing it. But God always has a man to fulfill his purpose. That's right. He's been work. Ask Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now you can ask Noah, Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. There was always a man uh -huh. to fulfill God's purpose. So don't get so holy. Don't get so caught up waiting on God when God is sending you a handout. God is sending you a hand out, but you refuse to take it uh, because you choose to wait on the Lord to come down from glory and get you out himself. <laughs> He's going to send someone. And the Bible confirms that in verse 28. It says, Then there passed by Midianites, merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit. And they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. So they pulled him out of the pit so that God could place him in Egypt. In, verse, uh, in chapter 39, verse 1, says, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, and an Egyptian, bought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he, meaning Potiphar, was a prosperous man, and he was house over his he was, excuse me, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Okay. Hmm. And Joseph found grace in, this, in his sight, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he put his hands to. Okay. So the grace and favor of God, that was a problem back home. All of a sudden, a non-believer sees that same favor and shows him favor. That means that you won't always be liked in church. That's right. Come on, man. Come on. Man. You won't always be well received by the people who are supposed to be thinking and believing the same thing that you will. The Bible says that it was an officer, a captain of the guard, that found, gave him favor and he put him over everything. So the second pit that Joseph has is a figurative pit. It's not really a pit, but it's just a place he can't control. 
It's a place he can't get out of. He's been sold into slavery. Hmm. It says Potiphar's wife also found favor with Joseph. So understand that the favor of God will not only attract people, but it'll also attract the wrong kind of right. attention. Yeah. Huh? That's right. Understand that people aren't attracted to you yourself, but they're attracted to the Holy Spirit that's working in you. Right. Huh? But she had her own reasons. This is why. There's two reasons. The Holy Ghost was one. He had the Spirit of God working in him. But the term officer in the scripture, watch this, can't say this for sure about Potiphar, but the position of an officer required the man to become a eunuch, to show that he was totally sold out to the cause of the government. Anybody who doesn't know what a eunuch is, a eunuch is a person who has their male parts removed to show that I will have no desire for anything else except for the job at hand. So we have two problems going on. Huh? Because the man wasn't sold out to his marriage, he was sold out to his job. Caused a problem in the house. Huh? So we're not only talking about a, a spiritual attraction, but we're talking about a physical attraction for more than one reason. Hmm. So understand this, men of God. You cannot allow your manhood to be sold out for financial gain. You you cannot you can't give up your manhood because your manhood is your priesthood. It is what gives you the authority to rule over your house. And understand what a priest is. A priest is one part of who Jesus was. He was prophet, he was priest, and he was king. Amen. Which means prophet, he speaks for God, man, you speak for God in your house. Priest, he makes sacrifices for yeah, your household. Yeah. Oh, and king, the one who rules. And understand that when he did that, he gave up all of that. He gave up all of that. But it's funny how, how, how this turns out. If, if you don't have male parts, then why do you have a wife? Come on, Except to make it look like you're normal. Mm -hmm. it, it shows us that we can't get into an area of faking it. It is what it is, and it's not what it's not. We can't get into faking our lives. Huh? If I don't have the finance to drive the nice car, then I'm not going to drive it. I'm not going to let that young kid say, I'm not going to perpetrate, I'm not going to front, I'm not going to fake it. Huh? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to live my life the way that I am. If I'm sold out to the government, then that's what it is. But I'm not going to try to live two lives. That's right. Because either you're going to have the job or you're going to have the household. So this attraction caused his wife to solicit him and ask him to lie with her. Joseph refused. So she lied on him and said that he made inappropriate advances towards her. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which gets him kicked out of Potiphar's house. So understand the favor that's on his life. You can see the favor because he's the captain of the guard. And the captain of the guard, if I was captain of the guard, that means I have people that know people that can get you killed. 
But once again, his life is spared. Once again, his life is spared. So he moves him <laughs> from Potiphar's house to the prison. In verse 20, it says, Joseph master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was in prison. Our first point was, don't be pitiful in the pit. My second point is, don't be insolent in enslavement. Don't be insolent. Being insolent means that you have a rude or disrespectful attitude. And, and Joseph had every right to be insolent. You see, we like to defend ourselves when things aren't going our way. But he, once again, here he's like Jesus. And once he's accused, he doesn't say a mumbling word. He accepts the punishment. Understanding that God is sovereign. And he's going to do things the way that he wants to do them. He's going to accomplish things the way he wants. So a lot of attitude. Sir, you're no longer employed here. No need to get attitude. Your services are no longer needed. No need to get attitude. You see, God is just moving you from one place to another. From the will to the kill. So understand, there's no reason to be insolent. Because your insolent attitude will cause others not to see you as a child of God. It will cause them to see you as just like anybody else. So don't be insolent in enslavement. You see, when God's time comes, we talked about before the chronos and the kairos. Chronos is chronological time. And the kairos is God's timing. So there's a difference between God's timing and our timing. And many times before our time ends or God's time begins, we're already tired of the situation. You gotta say that. That's right. We're already fed up with everybody disrespecting us. We're already fed up with people lying on us. And we're wondering when God is going to show up. But God is saying, just hold on a little while longer. Just stay in the fire until I pull you out. Because if you get insolent and decide that you're going to bring yourself out, then you won't be a finished product. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, Lord. So he's in prison. And the, the keeper of the prison shows him favor and he gives him charge over everything in the prison. <laughs> and one day he's in the prison in verse 40 and 7. And he comes across these two men. Okay. So now we're at the third figurative hole, this prison. We come across these two men and he says to them, why are you guys sad? And they say to him, because we've had dreams and we don't have anybody to interpret them. And he says something profound. He says, does an interpretation belong to God? Huh? So why are we talking to everybody else about what our stuff means. What does it mean when I have a dream that says this? Interpretation belongs to God. So you ask God for that interpretation. Okay? And so, <laughs> he gives them the interpretation and he says one is going to live and one is going to die. But he asks the one that lives to remember me. <laughs> and he doesn't remember him for two years. For two years until the Pharaoh has a dream. 
And so he's in prison and he's waiting. But while he's waiting, he's still ministering. He's still listening to the voice of God. He hasn't given up on what God has told him to do. He hasn't shown any emotion because even though he's still in the place, God is still confirming the dream. Still confirming the dream. And sometimes dreams can seem so real that if I can just get there in one way or another, that I can go on another day. That is why Malcolm, not Malcolm X, but Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. Because my dream will lead me to tomorrow. And tomorrow means that I may see the manifestation of the dream. You see, the dream is designed to keep us and to hold us until the Kairos. Until God's appointed time springs forth, our dreams Keep us going. I have a dream one day that all my children are going to be saved. I have a dream. I have a dream that they're all going to be ministers and operate on high levels. I, I have a dream that they're going to have good jobs and good work. I have a dream they're going to stay out of trouble. I have a dream that they're going to stay off drugs. I have a dream. One day they'll understand what I was telling them was right. I have a dream. And the dream is what we live for. Amen. So my first point was, don't be pitiful in the pit. My second point was, don't be insolent and enslaved. My third point is, <laughs> don't allow your prison to incapacitate you. Don't allow your prison situation to cause you to give up. Don't allow your situation to make you be still. That's right. Huh? Because we encounter things that just make us want to throw our hands up and walk away. I've had enough of this. My time is up. I need to get out of this situation. But God's timing says, no, you're going to wait and you're going to work. That's right. You can't give up my promise for your feelings. I gave you the dream so it will keep you. You have to minister to those around you. You have to still operate. That's right. And it may not feel good. You may not like it. But the dream demands that you still do the things of God. That's right. Huh? That's right. I've had many ministers to just give up. Many a church person to, to just quit. That's not what God has called you to do. So Joseph was pushed into the pit and pulled out. He was placed in the slavery and then kicked out. <laughs> he was thrown into prison. <laughs> Watch this, he was promoted up. Yes, yes, come on now. God's timing demands promotion. For your faithfulness, you will be promoted. Not by man's hands, because the Bible says that promotion comes neither from the east nor the west. God's timing. He will promote you. He is going to do it. While you are waiting on everybody else, to deal with you, God is going to put you in the place that he desires you to be. So a lot of times we think, I need more education. And God says, just remember the dream. You're saying, I, I need to network more. And God said, remember the dream. Hold on to what I have given you. Keep what I've placed in you. I told you that I have a plan and a purpose, and God cannot do two things which are lie and He cannot fail you. He cannot fail you. So your watch 
shows your dependence on man's time. But your patience, your patience shows your dependence on God. And if you can just be patient just for a little while, if you can just wait just for a little while, if you can just endure for a little while longer, he's going to promote you. He's going to promote you. He is going to do the work. So our Father, my God, we thank you, God, for the word that you sent forth on this day. We will not be pitiful in our situation. <laughs> we will not allow our enslavement to cause us to be insolent. Thank you. And we will not allow our prison to incapacitate us. We're going to hold on, God, to the dream you placed in us. And what other people call a curse, and what other people call a lie, God, I will hold on to your word. I won't forget who I am. I won't forget your timing is perfect. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. So today If you've had time with your, if you've had trouble with your watch, if you need strength to hold on just a little while longer, we'll pray with you for your strength. I said pray with you because you got to be strong too. You got to do something too. You got to, you got to encourage yourself up. Do what you got to do to hold on till your help comes. If you found yourself in a place where you find yourself being a little bit insolent, we're willing to pray with you.